This month it seems like I'm making cakes with weird names like Charlotte or Lady Fingers and today we're making Lady Fingers. And these gluten-free lady fingers are so delicious that it will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. Just imagine if that's a lady finger and that is representative of a lady finger, how odd it would be trying to use your iPhone or any kind of phone actually. Growing up, I really thought lady fingers are coming in a box from the supermarket. I never could have imagined that you can actually make ladyfingers. I mean, till recently, I thought it was kind of a weird, mysterious thing. But it is actually not hard to make yourself. So I read up that ladyfingers is really a sponge cake recipe. And I already have a flour combination which works very well for a vanilla sponge cake. I'm going to just use that to make my ladyfingers. First thing you have to do for a sponge cake and for the ladyfingers is separate the egg whites from the egg yolks. And I'm showing you my black forest cake how I'm separating eggs. Whoa, that was a good catch. So I separated now five egg yolks from the egg whites. And I'm gonna add one third cup of 65 grams of sugar to the egg yolk. I'm gonna heat up the water to get it to a boiling point. And I'm gonna have to whisk the egg yolk and the sugar like with a sponge cake over hot steaming water until it becomes a nice fluffy batter. The next part of the recipe says to beat the egg white to a soft peak with cream of tartar, but I don't have any cream of tartar handy, so I'm gonna leave it out. And this is how egg whites look like if they reach a soft peak. You see a little bit of the egg white right here around the beaters, and you see a little bit of a pattern forming, but it's not yet really hard. So I'm gonna add the sugar now to it and continue beating it. So I wanna beat the egg white and the sugar until it reaches a glossy look. Check out the peak. So this is kind of almost where you know the egg white reached the peak. Kind of a nice, beautiful abstract picture, sort of. So I'm gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla extract and the egg white. What is different than making a sponge cake is I'm not adding any oil or butter to it. I'm gonna combine out the egg yolk and the egg white and I wanna fold it under and you're doing it to make sure you don't destroy the egg white. It's a very gentle motion. There's one thing I would like to try out though. I wanna try out my sponge cake flour mixture and I wanna try out my tart crust flour combination and see how different the texture will be. I'm gonna to have to do some math again. So first I have to measure the empty bowl and that weighs 1016 grams. So this is 1410, 1410 minus 1016 is 309, huh? What? 15 is 394 divided by 2. So I'm gonna add now into this bowl 200 grams. And I said into one bowl I'm gonna add the tart crust and in the other one the sponge cake. And here's my pre mixed tart flour. I like to use my flour sifter to make sure I don't get too many flour clumps. And then for my other bowl, I'm gonna measure 60 gram of my vanilla sponge recipe. Now I'm gonna fold this under. So those recipes also use less flour than in a sponge cake. And I have to pipe now my lady fingers. I want my lady fingers though to have a specific length because I want to later use them for my Charlotte cake. So the Charlotte cake would probably be as tall as my cake ring and that should be then the length of my lady fingers. I'm gonna use the form and put my chopsticks in between there. So now I need my piping bag. I'm gonna fill in now the batter. So I've never done this before, that will be interesting. So this is my first attempt on piping lady fingers. So I'm gonna put them now into the oven for about eight minutes. And now I'm gonna switch to the sponge cake flour combination. You know, so the chopsticks help me a little bit to guide me a bit better. There's definitely a different thing I'm noticing when I'm piping the lady fingers and the tart crust flour combination makes it much easier to pipe. I assume because there's potato flour which absorbs much more liquid. Okay, my first ladyfingers came out. 
So these turn brown, which they shouldn't have. Our oven is very uneven and I know about it, so there's nothing I can do about it. I'm gonna transfer them over to a baking rack and let them cool down. So I took my second batch of lady fingers out and I found it easier to peel them off the parchment paper when they are still slightly warm. I'm gonna put them then on the drying rack and the bottom can dry out now as well. It is like a meringue almost. I let the lady finger dry out overnight and I'm gonna quick finish them and gonna sprinkle some powdered sugar over them. I was thinking about it, when I make my tiramisu, do I really need the lady fingers as a form or do I really just need the batter or the flavor? And I think it's really about the flavor. So I'm thinking I'm gonna simplify it and just bake the tiramisu batter on a flat sheet. Here are my finished lady fingers and I'm ready to use them for another recipe, but eh, I'm not 100% happy with it. The taste though is really good. So the lady fingers didn't turn quite out the way I was hoping for and it could have many reasons. It could be because I omitted the cream of tartar, but that's hard to say if it was the cream of tartar or if it was my gluten-free flour combination or I made a mistake in the recipe. Any of those are possibilities. I looked at a few recipes and I compared the ingredients and I did notice that this recipe has a very high egg to flour ratio. It uses 5 eggs to 120 grams of flour. Other recipes just use 3 eggs. With more flours you gain a bit more stability than just with the egg whites. I might have to give it another try next week because mm, I'm not happy enough to publish this recipe. If you enjoyed watching this video and maybe felt my frustration in making these lady fingers and want to know how I'm gonna improve it, please subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And I see you next week. Bye!